I'm Megan, and thank you for joining me. Today's practice is all about your legs, and uh, I call the legs the jewels of the spine because you may find that if you have any mobility issues in your feet, your ankles, your knees, or your hips, that oftentimes correlates to pain or discomfort in your spine. So keeping our legs moving and juicy and flowing is really important, and that's what this practice is. And by the way, I'm filming this on... Uh, the summer solstice, so happy summer to all of you. I, I hope that this leg practice gives you opportunity to get out and enjoy the long days if you're in the same hemisphere as me, <laughs> and to, uh, to get, keep your legs moving so you can do the things you love to do. So Bodhi and I are gonna get started. We're gonna come down onto our backside first. Coming on down, extend your legs long, Shift your hips side to side a little bit. Just rock your hips. And then notice how by rocking your hips, your legs are jelly rolling side to side. And then take just a moment to be still. We'll take about five breaths in stillness. And see if you can locate and land in the space from your toes all the way up to the hips. Noticing any joints, any places in your body that join two parts of your body, so your ankles, your knees, your hips. I think of joints as relationships between stability and mobility. But just letting your mind's eye see yourself from the toes up to the hips. A little scan. You could even imagine breathing down into your legs, see your breath as a color, feel it as a temperature, locating yourself through your legs. And then sensing your left leg, we're simply going to begin to bend the knee, slide the leg in, and then slide it out. And do that just a few times with the left leg, feeling that crease in the front of the hip. Notice your knee bending. So something I'm gonna encourage you to do with this whole practice is to move from different places, or I like to say initiate the movement from different places. So as you're doing this, imagine you're pulling your leg from your hip. What does that feel like? Versus bending your left leg from your knee. What if your knee initiates the movement? And then also try it from your foot. Maybe even push your heel into the ground and drag the foot along the surface of the ground. I'm just doing a couple more of these. And then we're going to open that uh, this up into a little bit more movement. So now, next time your leg is long, you're going to externally rotate the leg. So I've got a dog here in the way. You're going to turn your toes outward. And then once your toes are turned outward, you're going to slide your heel up towards your tailbone. So I'm bending my leg out to the side. That's external rotation and what we'd say is abduction out to the side. And you're going to slide it back. And just do that a couple times. So externally rotate the thigh, toes will roll outward, and then slide your heel up anywhere towards your bottom. And you can do it a variety. You can slide it close to your right leg. You can slide it out to the side further. And just feeling that hip, knee, and ankle movement and varying where you're starting this from. Starting from the foot. Now you can really feel your pinky toe side of the leg, can you use the surface of the ground and move from your pinky toe? Could you move from your outer knee? Or that beautiful outer thigh? And then we're gonna go the other way. So now we're gonna internally rotate the thigh. So you're gonna turn your big toe side of your foot down towards the ground. You'll feel yourself come towards the inner edge of the foot and you're going to drag your heel out towards the outer hip. And this one can be sticky, internal rotation of the hip and adduction, so go slow. You may not bring it all the way up to your hip, you know, maybe down here somewhere, and just let the thigh drop in and then take it out long again. Internally rotate the thigh, slide the heel up, let the inner knee fall, feel that nice stretch in your outer hip, and then slide it back. See if you can move from your big toe side of your foot. You could also move from your knee or your inner thigh. 
You can sense how your inner thighs have to be powerful to make this move as your outer hip gets that stretch. And just going that direction, opposite direction. And then we're going to do just a few where we're putting these two movements together. Please be playful. So externally rotate the thigh, draw it up, let it fall. So when you go back, bring the leg straight again. You can keep it out to the side or you might decide to lift it up and then take it out. All up to you, however you want to get back to the starting point, that straight leg. Then internally rotate and kick it out to the side. You might just hang there for a moment. I like that outer hip stretch. And going back and forth between those two movements. Noticing how sweetly and, and comfortably you're moving all the joints of the leg, like harmoniously. It's like a beautiful music in your leg. And being able to initiate from any of those joints. Taking a few more. And the next time that left leg is long, just pause with both legs long. Take those five to eight breaths. Just that magical moment, I call it. See if you can feel a difference in your two legs. Once again, try to visualize all the way from the toes to the hips. And maybe this time one leg feels lighter or heavier or you're able to to connect more with that left leg after moving it. You feel more of a disconnect from one leg than the other, a length difference, just sensing. Let your brain soak up that information that was created just by that simple movement. And now we're gonna switch and do the right leg. You can stay where you are. I'll hide behind Bodhi here. So feeling your right leg, simply start by bending the knee and sliding the heel in towards your buttocks. Feel that crease in the front of the thigh, maybe even a little stretch in, stretch in the back of the buttocks and slide it back out. So initially our brain says, ah, slide it in and out and you can almost leave. You don't have to pay attention, right? It's muscle memory, but see if you can do it very voluntarily, meaning you're really moving, you're choosing where you're making this movement from. Are you making it from that hip crease? The top of the thigh can be powerful. Might even feel the back of the thigh. Are you moving from your knee? Let that knee joint enjoy its mobility. You can even move from your foot and your ankle using the earth underneath you to push into with the heel or even the ball of the foot. Sensing the different ways we can move that whole leg from different joints, different muscles. And the left leg's just hanging out on holiday. Let's switch and do our next movement. So now you're going to externally rotate the thigh. So turn those toes out like you're trying to touch your pinky toe to the ground and slide the heel up towards your sit bones. Let it drop open and slide it back. Turn it out, slide it towards you, that nice inner groin stretch, and feel those action, the action of the muscles that are, are drawing the leg up. So there's two things going on. We talk about stability and mobility. The, the muscles that are stabilizing or making the movement, you might feel them contract like the outer hip. And then feel the muscles that have to stretch. You can move from your pinky toe side of your foot, pushing the toe in and come further out to the side. You might try initiating from the knee, like you're squeezing your back, your knee together, closing off the back of the knee, then opening it or moving from the hip. Do one more. Out to the side, that external rotation. All the joints harmoniously, harmoniously swimming together. Let's go the other way. So now you're going to internally rotate the thigh. This is my sticky side. And slowly draw your heel up towards your hip. 
and let it fall in. So if your body's anything like mine, you may notice there's a huge difference in the two sides. Oftentimes there is an internal rotation. Take it for what it's worth, which is just, you know that now. <laughs> Nothing else really matters. Asymmetries are completely normal. They don't equal pain all the time. Oftentimes they don't. And just sliding it. So internally rotating. Notice how the internal rotation begins to act the action of the muscles engaging to slide that heel out. You can just let it go. You might be moving, feeling more like you're moving from the hip and the thigh. You can move from your knee. Or try moving from your foot. Think of that big toe side of your foot, the arch of the foot. Taking your time, exploring. Notice the longer you do this, you might pick up a little bit more movement potential. And then let's put these two movements together. So you're going to externally rotate the thigh. There's the action of the muscles. Draw the heel towards your buttocks. Drop it open. You can either lift the knee to bring it back or keep it out to the side and bring it back. Let that pinky toe just touch the earth. Then internal rotation. Slide it out to the side. Let the inner thigh fall. And taking it back. So I like to think that the right leg has an opportunity to talk to us. And it's talking to us through sensation. My right leg has lots to say today. So I just listen. Listen with loving kindness. And know that as you go about your day, your right leg will be very gratified that you did these movements warming it up one or two more and then we'll come to a stopping point just pause again and feel feel the space from your toes to your hips maybe you can see all five toes maybe not the soles of your feet the tops through the lower legs and knees and upper legs and hips what does it feel like now Then we're going to bend both legs, place the feet on the ground, do a little bit more with the hips. So this time you're going to take the left leg, cross the left ankle on the right thigh. Just pause there for a moment. You can take your left hand and gently push the thigh away and release, getting that little stretch. This is a very popular one in most yoga classes, reclining pigeon, whatever we want to call it. But go slow, feel what's stretching. And right now I'm using my hand to create that movement but then let's see if we can release the hand and use your leg muscles to create that movement instead of the hand pushing away the left thigh and then pulling it towards your navel center so can you use the leg muscles themselves can you can move from the hip or the knee you might be able to move from the ankle and then once we found that little bit of movement we're going to, if you're familiar with arch and curl, very common one in somatics, we're going to be doing an arch and curl. So now as you inhale, you're going to push, we're going to take this to the breath, inhale, push your tailbone down and arch your back. So it'll feel like the center of your spine is lifting and at the top of the inhale, your weight's resting in the pelvis, in the shoulder blades. You can even press your shoulder blades into the ground. Then as you exhale, press the center of the spine into the ground and lift your legs up towards you. Now you're gonna use the power of the right leg to lift the left leg. Nice stretch going on through the back of that left thigh, but also the knee. So inhale, right foot down, arch the back. If you don't wanna do the arch and curl, by the way, you can just exhale, draw the leg in, inhale, drop it down. But I like to feel the connection of the legs to core and to spine. So inhaling and arching. Exhale, curl the spine so tailbone lifts, shoulders can even lift, and then draw the legs in. Let the left leg either stay relaxed because you're choosing to do that, and the right leg is doing all the work. So the left leg would be getting more of a passive stretch. 
or you have the option of if you just slightly flex your left foot, so draw the top of the foot towards your shin and hug your thighs together, then that left leg is active too. So see which way fits your fancy today. <laughs> Up and down, and then once we find that arch and curl, you might wanna keep the right leg lifted and give that left leg a ride, making some circles. Take it around. You can feel like you're massaging the back side of your body. You go both directions if you'd like. All right, we're gonna let the right leg come back down for landing. Take your arms out to your sides, Bodhi dog and all, and keep your shoulder blades grounded. And now we're gonna go side to side. Think of the pinky toe side of your right foot. Visualize it and fall onto the pinky toe as far as you can go comfortably. Lift back up and then fall onto the big toe side. So now we're really getting that leg line right into the side body. I tend to keep my arms slightly overhead so I get a little more stretch through the side body. But this is where again, we're connecting the legs to the torso. Very important, right, to the spine. You can just let them fall side to side. If I'm doing to this, this to my breath, I typically fall on the inhale or think of stretching. So as my legs fall to the right, I breathe into the left lung, fill it up, and then as I exhale, contract the abdominal wall, pelvic floor, and use the power of the core as well as the legs to lift back up. So inhale, breathe into your right ribs, drop the legs to the left. Fill that whole right side, create space with your breath. Exhale, empty out, squeeze the breath out, bring them back to center. If you want to add a little bit more for the upper body, whichever way the legs are falling, the opposite leg, or excuse me, the opposite arm can reach overhead. Notice as you're doing this, are you gaining more space, more freedom, right? Able to go a little bit further. Just feeling yourself through your breath. Last one. Come back to the center. Most people like a little hold here. So if you want to do that, you could draw the legs in the way they are. Oftentimes we put hands to the back of the right thigh. I tend to cross the left thigh on top of the right and bring both legs in. I just like to get my tailbone up and make little circles. But take that moment, pull them in. And let the legs come back down, uncross for a moment. Take them long. Take just those couple of breaths, acknowledging the movements you just did and how they might feel in your two legs. Do your legs feel different again? So we'll do those movements on the other side. So slide your legs in. This time you're gonna cross your right ankle on your left thigh. And we'll start by doing the passive stretching. Take your right hand, use the power of your arm to gently press the thigh away from you. And then you can draw it back in a little bit if you want, or just let it fall in. Notice the range of motion that you can find when your hand is doing the movement. Kind of mark that in your brain. Because then we want to see if we can break down any restrictions and do that <laughs> same amount of movement with the muscles. So remove the hand. Think of drawing the outer knee away from you and then towards your navel center. Let the muscles do the movement. You can move from your hip. Think of that hip crease changing shape. You could also activate your foot by flexing that foot like we did earlier. And then once we found that range of motion in the right hip, we're gonna go into the arch and curl. So breathe in, think of breathing into the front of the body, fill the front of the body, arch the back, pressing into the tailbone and the shoulder blade. So you'll see there's actually like an air pocket under the center of the spine. As you breathe out, lift the shoulder blades, lift the tailbone, and then also bring that left leg towards you. If you don't wanna do the arch and curl, you can just lift the leg up and drop it down. Again, I like to add 
the leg movement with the spinal movement. So we're arching the spine, pressing the thighs away from us, curling the spine, bringing the thighs towards your torso. And your right leg could be passive and relaxed, just along for the ride. Or as I like to do, I hug my inner thighs together, flex that right foot, and take it that way. Back and forth. Feel all the joints in your legs. Feel how strong your left leg is, helping to lift up the right. And then once you've done that a few times, lift that left leg off the ground. Let that left leg be really powerful and just make some circles. I think you can think of shifting your weight from the left hip to the right hip. Right leg could be passive or again, just taking a little ride on the left leg. Switch the directions, be, be playful, let your legs play. And then we'll set the foot back down Take your arms out to your side, so keep the shoulder blades grounded. Sense the, the bottom of the right foot and the pinky toe side of the left foot and let the legs go over to the left onto that pinky toe side of the left foot. Lift back up, feel the big toe side of the left foot and fall onto the big toe side. Doing this to the breath, I like to inhale to the side. Breathe into the right ribs as the legs fall to the left. Exhale, draw into the center, hug in, empty the breath. Inhale onto the big toe side of the left foot. Breathe into your left lung. Exhale back. And it'll feel different depending on if your left foot is more out to the left side. You could walk it towards the center of your uh, spine. But feel the way your legs are connected to your torso. Adding a little more side stretching as the legs fall to the left, you can reach your right arm overhead. As the legs fall to the right, reach your left arm overhead. Breathe into that left lung, fill it up. We use our breath to create space as well as the movement. Breath can create physical space in the torso. It also creates pranic space anywhere in the body just by visualizing it. So if you've got knee pain, see your knee, breathe into your knee, breathe out and release. Taking a few more side to side. And we'll come back to the center. If you want to do the hold, your foot could just stay on the ground. You can draw the legs towards you just in that position, wrapping hands around the left thigh. Or as I like to do, I cross the back of the right thigh on the front of the left, and then draw the knees in, let the tailbone lift, a little more stretching for the low back there, less for the hip. See what you like in stillness or movement. Loving those legs up. You can let your ankles roll too if you'd like. Any little playful movements, think of all the way these little joints move, your toes. And then uncrossing, come back down, let the legs go long. This time we're going to be transitioning onto our front side, so I'm going to have you do your rest on that side. Roll over. I'm going to get a face full of Bodhi here, but my toes are in the grass. Probably have grass all over my feet, in fact. Coming onto your front side, take the arm position that feels most comfortable for your spine. And just like we did in the very beginning, just shift your hips side to side. That's going to help to relax your belly into the ground. Feel the front of the pelvis, the low abdomen softening into the earth, the tops of the thighs, the tops of the feet. Feeling the connection of the front body to the earth. So this movement's going to be pretty specific to engage the back line of the legs. And we're going to start by bending the left knee and placing the heel right about over the knee. So you've got a, a, an L shape with your left leg. 
push the thigh bone into the ground and notice how when you push the left thigh bone into the ground you feel action through the muscles in the back of the leg and the buttocks and then just release that just push the thigh down a few times and release it the next time push the thigh down to begin that that initial engagement and then lift the leg up so think of pushing your heel up towards the sky lifting the thigh this is another movement where you can uh, try moving from different places. The other thing is, if you tend to have low back pain, what I'm gonna encourage you to do is do the push into the ground, do the lift away from the ground, then let it come down and let it come all the way down and shake it out, let the muscles relax in between. So what we're trying to do is, a, is to initiate that engagement of hamstrings and glutes. You can even feel your calf if you push through your heel, you can lift it up there for a few breaths. Let it come back down, relax it. The other thing I would watch for is, can you keep your right side relaxed? If we have one side that's hypervigilant and always in the on position, like I do, then that side's gonna try to turn on whether it's its turn or not. So just one side at a time. Another way we can play with this, earlier we worked with internal and external rotation of the hip. If you drop your left pinky toe towards the ground, so left foot out to the left side just a little bit, you're actually internally rotating your thigh. And notice what that feels like to lift it up in that position. For most of us, we might be a little bit weaker there. That's your inner thigh action. You can also lift the heel up and let the foot fall towards the right leg line. That's your external rotation of the hip and lift it up there whole different set of muscles. You might feel more going on in your outer hip and buttocks there, but we're just playing. Lift from the hip and the buttocks. Try lifting from your foot. What happens if you lift your pinky toe or your heel, ball of the foot, and let it come down. Shake it out, jelly roll the leg. Got one more we're gonna do on this side for that left leg. This time I want you to point your toes Reach your big toe away from your body, so towards the back of the mat. Without bending your knee, lift the whole leg line up. So you're reaching the toes away from the buttocks, lengthening, and then coming down. Just the whole leg. Lift it up and drop it down. Because we're calling the legs the jewels of the spine. If you want to add a little bit for the spine, just take your arms out to your sides, wherever it's comfortable, elbows bent. As you lift that left foot, reach it back first. So the reaching helps to engage it before you even lift it. Reach it, lift it. You can also lift your spine up. So think of just gently lifting your shoulders. It's not so much a head movement. I'm going to keep my nose pointing down towards the ground. I'm going to lift my chest, my collarbones. You can come straight down onto your chin, or if you like to turn from one cheek to the other, you're welcome to do that. And you might want to just do leg without adding the spine. Lifting up on the inhale, if you're doing the back bend, well, it should be helpful. And releasing down on the exhale. One or two more. Sometimes it's nice to take it into the hold and let it all go. You can bend your knees and just let your legs fall side to side or make circles. You're moving from your hips and your knees, but also move your ankles, your toes. A little bit of wiggle room for all of the joints here. Let the legs come back down, release into the ground. And then feel. Feel once again from the toes to the hips. Maybe now you can visualize the back side of the body. Just let the weight of the thighs fall into the ground. Let's do that on the right side. So feel your right thigh, bend your right knee, placing the heel about over the back of the knee. Just start by pushing your thigh into the ground. Notice what muscles you can engage just by doing that, and releasing that little bit of a push. And the push can come from pushing the thigh down itself or you could think of drawing the top of the foot towards the earth. You could push the knee. Or even the front of the hip. That all feels different. Different ways to initiate the muscles. 
and that's freedom. We can make the same movement with a different combination or different order of the muscles engaging. And once we found that, push down to feel that initial engagement, then lift the thigh up off the ground. This is a great strengthener for hamstrings and glutes, which I might add the comp. The common comment and thought is that ham people need to stretch their hamstrings, particularly if they have back pain. What I have found in this line of work is that most people need to strengthen the hamstrings. So this is a great little strengthener. If you're feeling your back muscles cramp up, then try to keep the tailbone a little bit more down towards the ground. Keep the low back long, almost like you're lifting up the navel center away from the ground just a little bit. That's a hint that can help you. So you're lifting up. If you're feeling that pain, release the leg all the way down. Shake the hips and the legs in between. So don't be afraid to come back to that complete point of relaxation. Push the thigh into the ground. Maybe lift from the heel. Hold it there for a few breaths. Take it back down. Let it go. Shake it up. Let's play with that internal and external rotation. So if you feel the pinky toe side of your foot, and let it fall out to the edge so it'll feel like you're rolling into your outer knee. Try lifting from there. Mm. Yummy. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> Different experience though, probably. And take it down. So letting the pinky toe fall out to the side. Lift the thigh bone off the ground as best you can. See if that left side is playing nicely and being quiet. So we're not engaging the muscles in that leg and buttocks. It's time for the right, the right side to shine. giving it its day in the sun, which I'm fortunate we do not have today. It was actually brilliantly sunny here in West Cork, so much so that I couldn't film yesterday. I didn't think that was going to be a problem in Ireland, but I'll tell you, it was too bright out here. <laughs> and then let's do that external rotation. So feel the big toe side of your foot and the arch of your foot. Let it fall towards the back of the left leg and see if you can lift up that way whole different set of muscles. However you want to let it drop. So you can see we're really playing with this idea of the mobility comes when we have the stability too, right? Or you can reverse that. The stability comes, but we need the mobility as well. That is the perfect relationship in joints. Take one or two more wherever you need to. Maybe take a hold for a few breaths. And then let it come down. Shake out the right leg. We're going to do that long legged movement. So arms wherever they're comfortable for you. And just feel yourself from your right toes to the hip. Reach your big toe towards the back of the mat. So that you should feel like that's helping you to engage. And then lift the whole leg line. So I'm not bending the knee this time. I'm thinking of lifting from the inner thigh helps to power it up more and then exhaling and coming back down. And take your time. I like to do the lift to the inhales, particularly if you're going to add the spinal bend. So as you're inhaling, lift the collarbones, keep your nose down towards the ground so the back of the neck is long. It's not a head lift, it's a spine lift. Well, of course, your neck is part of your spine, but keep it long. Arms are soft. Use your muscles in your torso. You can turn on to one cheek as you come down if you'd like. Inhale up. And exhale down. Feel those jewels of the spine as they play with the movement of the spine itself. What happens first? Can you sense in your body? A lot of times... You know, it'll be the lift first to the spine and the, then the leg goes. Or it might be you can tell that you're always initiating from the leg and then the spine goes. So you're just noticing those things. Make it smooth. Take a hold if you'd like. And back down. Heels up towards the sky. Make some circles at the hips. Just jelly roll them around again. And then press into your hands. I'm going to come up to a seated position. 
take your time coming up or you're welcome to roll to your side first. Got one last one we're going to do seated with the internal external rotation. And here we are, grass on the feet. Take your hands behind you, support yourself with your arms. We'll do the left leg first as we have been doing. So here's that same internal external rotation and you can do it from your pinky toe, the outer leg line, the knee, the hip. So externally rotate the left leg and then drag it out to the left side. If you've got shag carpet, you might wanna put something down. And then big toe side internally rotate. So the whole leg line is internally rotating and drag it inward. External rotation, drag it outward. This is a really simple one, but it's great to power up your hips and feel that connective space between the leg and the pelvis or the leg and the entire rest of your body or torso. But once again, the movement can be done from the hip, but you can also move from your foot. See what it feels like to dip that pinky toe down and then drag it out. Dip your big toe down and drag it in. Back and forth. I also use this one as an assessment. So you may notice you can really get a feeling for what your internal rotation is all about, how much mobility you have, and what your external rotation is about. Just make a note of that before <laughs> we switch to the other leg, because there may be some differences if you're like most people. <laughs> Let's come back to the center and pause for a moment to shake out the legs. Take a second to feel the magic, that magic moment in between. Do your legs feel different even after doing all those other things? Is there any difference between the left and the right? And let's do the right. We'll finish it off. Feel the big toe side of your foot. Externally rotate. So we do that first to feel the muscles engage, those outer hip muscles. You're going to stretch the inner thighs. You drag it out to the side. And then feel the big toe side, internally rotate the thigh. So think of bringing your inner knee towards the ground, drag it to the midline of the body and going back and forth. Definitely more of a swimming move, which I've promised myself I'm doing today, perhaps not have yet to go in the ocean. It's a little cold. Last I read it was up to 57 degrees but I'm gonna do it so my legs might need this warm up. <laughs> if any of you out there are cold water swimmers, I would very much uh, appreciate any advice you can give me because I am not. <laughs> warm Wisconsin summer lakes is, is where it was always at for me. But let your legs swim. And move it from the foot. Even things I notice like the position of my foot if I draw the foot back, I, I really tighten it, but then I feel my calf muscle stretching and my shin engaging versus just letting the ankle be relaxed and the foot be relaxed. And if you remember your range of motion in the first leg, check it out on this side. Do you have that same external rotation? Do you have the same internal rotation? Keeping in mind, we already did a number of movements like this. Come back to the center. Shake it out. Last one, hands behind you. Take your feet to the ground. Very simple. Let your legs fall to the right. Lift them back up and let them fall to the left. So we're going to keep it simple with the hands behind us, but just to maybe prove my point of understanding the connection of the legs to the spine, to the torso as a whole, to what I say is the deep intuitive core. See if you want to lift your legs, your hands up, not your legs, your hands up, and do that same movement without your arms. And you can do this movement by pushing into the feet, pushing into the legs, but you can also feel how your core, the muscles in the abdomen are coming in, the muscles in your back and spine. So making this movement without the hands down. Move from the toes. How does it feel to rock it around all the way from the toes? I'm coming towards the camera so I have to scoot back again. And let that core wake up. Let the core feel the connection to the leg and the legs just be married to your core. All working together. Last one. 
and take a moment to say thank you to yourself. Bodhi says thank you. We appreciate you being here with us. Love up your legs today. Do something fun on them, with them. And notice where your feet take you and be grateful for all the places they take you. Peace, joy, love, and light. Thank you, patrons, and thank you to all of my subscribers and those of you that support me.